Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl here and iPhone 12 review time. And I've used these a bit longer this time around for the past 30 days as my daily. I wanted to use them a bit more in depth to give you my overall thoughts because I know that we have more iPhone 12 models to choose from this year. You can see that we've got the four lined up here all the way from the mini, the standard 12, 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. And to break that down for my choice, I feel like the iPhones are a bit like the Goldilocks zone. So for example, the mini, I honestly just find it too small. 5.4 inch display, and I get why people are attracted to the form factor. You do save an extra hundred bucks, so if you're set on it, you kind of already know your pick, but I just find it a bit too small, especially that we've been shifting to larger phones in the past five years, not to mention the notch size. It's still the same across the lineup and it just feels so much bigger on a smaller device, but essentially the same features across the board so you're not losing out on anything performance wise. And all the way over to the other side of the spectrum for the 12 Pro Max, so 6.7 inches, it is massive. It almost feels like you're using a small tablet. And the only reason why I've actually selected the Pro Max, other than to compensate for myself, is of course the battery. And we're gonna chat about that in a bit, and that's really in relation to 5G. I still think that Goldilocks Zone is the perfect in-between. You're either selecting the 12, 12 Pro, and honestly, I think most people, the standard 12 for me is just the winner. To the overall design, it's familiar. It's an iPhone, what can they possibly change? They've gone back to the straighter edges or I guess the flat edges around the sides. I'm personally a big fan of that. I don't know if we can give Apple props because we've seen it before on the iPhone 4, the iPhone 5. I guess it does come down to personal preference but I'm welcoming back an older design. It's more modern, it's flatter. What else can be said about it? It's an iPhone. And there's actually more in common than not across the 12 lineup, which makes it easier to kind of pick this one. So for example, the display. Super Retina XDR across the board. And the only thing that is changing between models is the screen size. A14 Bionic chip, once again, the same across the board. So performance, obviously on the latest iPhone, it kind of is the best in class. Throwing every single thing that you can think of against an iPhone, it handles like butter. So multitasking, playing the most graphic intensive games, scrolling through social media, switching between your faves. The experience is buttery smooth, but when you compare that honestly to last year, say for example, the iPhone 11, and we've already got to that time where improvements in smartphone gains are so negligible, I honestly can't tell the difference between both using them. And seeing as the iPhone 11 has now dropped in price, I still think this is more compelling. If you already own an iPhone 11, no need to upgrade. And I would honestly still consider the 11 if price is a really big issue, which I think it is for a lot of people, just keep this guy in mind. And I wanna chat quickly about the display because I've used it longer than most. It does have the new nano texture coating, so that should give you four times better drop resistance. And there is that inverse relationship with how strong slash brittle something is. So when you make something harder, it usually is more brittle, it cracks easier. So Apple has gone in the opposite direction, made it a bit more durable, but in turn, it's easier to scratch. And in all of my iPhones ready, I have picked up so many screen scratches, almost to the point where I've just stacked them against each other to say, show a color comparison. In that little area, this screen is almost destroyed. And you can really see that off angle against the light. I'll really try to highlight that on a video. So 100% if you are buying an iPhone 12, please, please, please grab a screen protector. I'll leave my fave link down below. This one's from Rhino Shield. They reached out to kind of sponsor this video. So shout outs to them. The 3D impact screen protector will help a ton with those surface scratches. And of course the more heavier ones, they've done a ton of testing themselves. They've got so many different options of cases, bumpers, you can interchange pieces to customize your own. They even have their own limited edition PewDiePie line. You can see that I've gone with my studio colors, the white with the orange, and since I've got so many Rhino Shield cases, I'll give some away to you guys. I'll just pick someone down below in the comments, leave something nice for me to read. The next big thing coming to, of course, the 12s is 5G, but I find that hard to talk about because that really depends on which region that you're in. For example, I'm up here in Toronto, some pretty decent speeds, but nowhere comparable to some of you guys that live, say, in US cities. There is definitely, though, a big improvement in LTE speed, so I would definitely say, going towards an iPhone 12, just connectivity-wise, we are going to next gen. Speaking, though, about 5G, it is the biggest battery drain on my smartphone, and that's the main reason why I'm still using the 12 Pro Max, just having extra battery, because by the end of the day, I am lucky to have 10% left, 
and I often have to juice it up before I go to bed just because I won't have enough by 11 p.m. or midnight. So the 5G definitely takes a big toll on battery life and just once again, something to consider. Speaking about battery, it does last that one day of heavy usage, but we also have a new charging mechanism and that's of course MagSafe. It's the new optional way to charge your iPhone now, so it kind of fits right onto the back, just like a hockey puck, you'll get that little notification that your phone is charging. People have been mentioning online the backs of iPhones have been getting discolored or having small little circles. I honestly don't really see that on mine. I do wipe it clean though after every time I use it and maybe when you kind of stare at the phone off center or kind of towards the light, you do see a very faint circle. Honestly, most people rock their phones with cases anyways and I don't see that being too big of an issue. And I'm sure Apple has tested this very thoroughly. MagSafe, it's definitely here to stay. My only criticism, we're still using Lightning. I'm sure we'll eventually make that upgrade to USB-C at the bottom. Last but not least, the cameras. On the standard 12, we've got the two lenses. So of course the standard, that's just a wide, and of course the ultra wide. On the Pro, just like on last year's 11, we have the addition of a telephoto lens. And actually a bit different this year on the 12 Pro Max, it actually has a slightly better wide. But we'll kind of chat about that in a bit. So photo wise, honestly, even though they are improved sensors, so slightly better aperture, I honestly cannot tell too big of a difference between the 12s and the 11s. And that's just in your regular shots. They still look great. The biggest improvements though are coming to low light performance and really when you're pushing the cameras for some of the harder shots. So better dynamic range when you're shooting right into the sun, that's where you'll really notice some of the key differences. You'll see in the 11 shots, the low light performance isn't as good. It definitely is way grainier. But for most of your day-to-day -day shooting, you honestly won't notice a difference and that's not a bad thing. It's still one of the best cameras. Video performance, that's actually where we're seeing a big improvement. And I'm gonna bring up my Pro models here just because they've got that extra sensor. And of course on the 12 Pro Max, you now have something called sensor shift, very similar to what I've got on my mirrorless camera. And that's where the actual sensor is adjusting, moving slightly, that helps with stabilization and of course low light shots. The video quality is just so good. Hands down, best in class. These are the first devices that shoot in Apple Pro Raw. It's an HDR format. If you are a pro user, honestly, you could get by using footage from either of these devices. Stabilization, the dynamic range, I can't up the video enough. Obviously, when you transform that into, say, an Instagram video or you're uploading to Twitter, TikTok, that all gets compressed, but that's only kind of pushing third-party developers to kind of make their video quality or their video formats better to take advantage of some of the hardware and of course software that these phones offer. And that's where the biggest improvements for the cameras kind of fall. And if video is something super important to you, then yeah, you should definitely be eyeing the 12s. And we also do have better water resistance. I believe it's the same IP rating, but you can kind of submerge your device for longer. I honestly haven't been swimming with mine just yet. And that's kind of the iPhone 12 line wrapped up into a nutshell. I wouldn't say essential to upgrade. Remember that iPhone 11 is still very juicy. We've gone back to an older design. I think that's the right direction. We are introducing 5G, could be better depending on your region, but also a big battery drainer. The screen has a big improvement, but remember still locked at 60 Hertz. Remember my choice, the Goldilocks zone, the standard 12 I think is best for most people out there. We've got softer glass, so just remember to rock that screen protector. I hope you guys enjoyed my kind of revisited iPhone review. I did take a bit longer on this, but hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Remember a lot of the Rhino Shield stuff is up for a giveaway. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope to catch you in one of my next ones or in one of my vlogs. Peace.